Hey guys, Corey here, Sky's the Limit Car Care. Today we're going to tackle a handful of, of uh, subjects all at once, and we're going to get started by talking about the damaging effects that happen to the paint and different surfaces of your vehicle, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to fix those, those damages that you may already have on, your, on the surface, and we're also going to go into, from there, go into uh, how to protect the area after you've removed that damage, and how to maintain it moving forward, or why, rather, you should maintain it moving forward. And then we're going to finally end uh, on the subject of uh, honesty in the industry and transparency with your clients and making sure that you uh, give them the valid and honest and um, all the forthcoming information they should have so that they can uh, make a wise decision without feeling like uh, they were duped by you. So we're going to start by talking a little bit about um, the different types of damage on the car. So some of the contaminants that will land on a vehicle, you might have tar or brake dust that lodges into the paint. Um, this is like on a microscopic level, this is what's happening. You have little pieces of, of steel coming off of brakes in front of you, coming off your own brakes, and they're hot and they lodge right into your paint. And um, you might have dirt, you know, bits of dirt and stuff, and uh, the swirls, which we'll get into in a minute, or a water spot. Um, or, or mineral buildup deposits that eventually will start to etch into your paint. Um, obviously with dirt, regular washing is going to solve that. Um, with tar, you want something like a solvent. Uh, CarPro Tar-X is fantastic for removing that. Um, iron, you want something like CarPro Iron-X. That's going to actually dissolve that, that, uh, that piece of brake dust. And it's, all, it's important to get rid of all of these things before you put protection on. And uh, traditionally, people use waxes, polymer sealants. With waxes, it didn't matter as much. I mean, you know, if you want to do things right, you did things right. But if you didn't do things right and the wax, you know, after the wax died off in a few weeks or a month, it was no big deal. You could just do it again. But when you move into a sealant, that's six months. When you move into a ceramic coating, then this is for years. You know, as long as you maintain it properly, this is going to last for years. So you don't want to go and try to put this on top of that. Not only will you have, have this on top of that and not have uh, applied it correctly, but you will also not be able to allow this to bond to the paint because a ceramic coating, unlike a wax, requires a 100% surgically clean surface. Um, and just cleaning it alone won't necessarily make it to where, like just chemically cleaning it, won't necessarily make it to where the ceramic coating can, can bond to it, just because you can't be 100% sure you got everything. So you want to start with cleaning it chemically, but then you're going to come into the mechanical cleansing portion, which requires polishing compounds, abrasives. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but first, you want to get rid of this stuff. So you're going to wash the car first. That's the first step. So wash. That's one, and then you're going to decon, that's two, decontaminate, decon for short. Decon means we get rid of this, that's tar, so we're going to use our CarPro Tar-X and make sure to, with any chemical that you use, make sure to fully read about that and learn how to use it properly before you go haywire because Tar-X, just for an example, is a brilliant product, removes tar very well, but you want to read what you're using because if you spray Tar-X on old PPF or on any kind of plastic film or plastic trim that is really sensitive, you can damage it. Um, so learn how to use it first. But on clear coat, it works great. You use the Tar-X, the tar comes off, you got that solved. Now, traditionally people clay, uh, they use a clay bar and you can still do that. Um, but if you want to save some time, you can use some of these chemicals that will, uh, the tar won't get your clay dirtied up as fast. It will, it, it'll uh, work a lot faster, especially on a widespread area than trying to clay tar off. And then the brake dust, the little centered pieces of, um, of metal that are stuck in your paint, you can sit there and clay at that forever, you know, and try to get the paint smooth. But, or you could just spray some Iron X on there and literally spray it all over the whole car and then wash it off. And that's going to be gone. And you might have in its place, if you were to look at it on a microscopic level, obviously you might have a tiny little thing like that there, but our abrasive uh, step is going to remove that later. So now we have decontaminated it, we've removed tar, um, we've removed iron. In some cases you could have, uh, you know, somebody might have pa uh, sprayed paint or something near and some paint had landed on there. That's a different situation. Um, or concrete, some, you know, there's all kinds of different things that can get on your paint. But these are the most 
um, common situations is tar, dirt, iron, stuff like that. So we've washed it, we've decontaminated it, and that includes, um, actually, let's talk about this one as well. So that's a mineral uh, spot over there. This is uh, where the water evaporated and left behind uh, some calcium or lime or God knows what other kind of uh, mineral that it left behind. So to get rid of that, we're going to use something more acidic, something like, and we're going to lump that into, into the decon section as well. So we have uh, tar -X as a product that will remove certain stuff, iron -X, iron X, that's a solvent, that's an iron contaminant remover, and then um, for this we're going to use something a little more acidic. This is a water spot remover, or technically the correct term would be a mineral spot remover, but everybody calls them water spots. So um, to remove that, we're going to use like D-Scale, new product from CarPro, or there's a variety of products you can use, but that's going to be a little uh, more acidic, and that's going to actually remove the, the any minerals that didn't come off during your wash cycle, which some may. But anyway, so now we've gotten rid of that. Now we still, maybe we didn't get that off soon enough. We left it there for a few days or a couple weeks, and it caused a little etching in there, a little spot that you see when you go to wash it, and somehow... You thought there was nothing there, but right as you're drying the surface, right as you're drying the surface, you see just a shadow there for a minute before it's completely dry. That's what's going on there. A very, very shallow etching that's slowly going to get worse and worse if you don't take care of that. So uh, we have our wash, our decon, and then next we're going to do, uh, we're actually going to uh, uh, dry, you know, wash any of this stuff that's on there. We're going to make sure we wash that off again. So depending on how well you rinsed it at this point, um, you might have another wash step or you might have it clean enough to dry now. So you dry the car and at that point you move on to the polishing or compounding. Uh, polish or compound. If you're going to, um, if you're going to uh, try to remove some deeper things then you're going to use a heavier cut polish which in the USA people usually refer to as a compound. Um, it's uh, six dozen, uh, six one, half dozen the other. It's really, you know, could be used interchangeably. But people usually think of compound as a heavier aggressive and a polish as a less aggressive. So uh, at this point, we're going to use something like um, CarPro UltraCut, UltraCut if we're trying to compound heavy, or or like Shoal Concepts uh, S2 Black, something like that. And we're going to take that, put it on a machine. Uh, with whatever pad we decide. You can learn more about that by uh, emailing us or look at some of our other videos. And we're going to use that to level the clear coat like we talked about. And so then we're going to come across this with our machine. And this is the most time consuming process or part of the process is the machine polishing. If you do it right, then you could take uh, many hours um, uh, or even days if depending on how obsessive you are about it. If you move to the next level as a professional, um, then you know we even get into sanding, which is the next level heavier cut than than compound would be wet sanding the vehicle. But that's not uh, something that you just want to take on without knowing what you're doing. Um, so at this step, you uh, use a polish or a compound. And uh, the way a polish or a compound works is it's a liquid that uh, has something in it that's harder than your paint because you need something harder than your paint in order to in, in order to lower the level of this paint in order to cut it back in order to get through those swirls and get through that stuff and lower that level of paint back to here. So uh, generally they use aluminum, aluminum oxide. Uh, there's a, a variety of different, um, different abrasives that, that people use. Some of them use what they call diminishing abrasives. Some of them use what they call, uh, Meguiar's uses the term uh, submicron abrasive technology, I believe is what they do, what they call it, SMAT. So SMAT. They call that submicron abrasive technology. Uh, DAT, that's diminishing abrasive technology. Um, and these abrasives are these tiny little, you know, it's gone are the days of when it was like, the, you know, I hear the term rocks in a bottle. People used to use compounds that like you could feel the grit, you know, it was like sand in a, in a solution. Now they're super smooth. Anyways, you use one of these compounds, you put it on a polishing pad, you take that machine and um, what it's going to do is rub that liquid solution with the abrasives in it and slowly level the paint. Uh, if you are to use something too aggressive or what used to be termed, you know, rocks in a bottle, then as you're, like say you had, uh, let's redraw this. Say you had a surface with 
swirls here, lots of swirls all in it, and you were to come along with your uh, a really heavy, aggressive compound that had um, big abrasives in it they're, that are like jagged abrasives. Those jagged abrasives, as they come across, they're going to level this, but they're going to leave it like this. Not as bad as it was, but they're going to still leave, you know, what you call um, micro marring or whatever term you want to use. So you level the big swirls out of here, but now you have to come back and refine what these nasty abrasives gouge. Now, the technology's come a long way, so now you have a lot better, more refined abrasives. They've in, in, um, improved the technology. You might have, you know, tiny little, they're, you know, well-rounded abrasives. They still cut well, but they don't leave this jiggity, jaggedy thing. You have a cluster of abrasives like this, and when you start polishing, uh, these things break up into these little tiny abrasives, and they don't leave that, um, you know, that, that jaggedy edge there. They come back and refine it real nice like that. So that's pretty much the whole process. Um, now, that doesn't leave it protected. Again, uh, this polishing or compounding step is not a, uh, a protective step. It's more of a, um, you know, the final step in perfecting the paint. Once you've perfected the paint, uh, you still need to protect it. And in order to protect it, these polishes and compounds, they have, um, they have oils in them, uh, lubricants, different things that make it to where they can smooth out that paint without, uh, without uh, you know, just carving it up. So now you have your nice smooth paint. There's a little bit of oil on it. You're going to come along with a uh, uh, IPA or a CarPro eraser. We, we term that a panel wipe. So the next step would be uh, number four, panel wipe. Now, back in the day, that wasn't as important because you were dealing with a uh, old school wax or you know some type of carnauba wax that had a whole lot of solvent inside the wax. And so when you went to apply the wax, the wax would may have, the solvent inside the wax would remove any oils that were left from the polisher compound anyway. And if it didn't remove them all, it didn't really matter. It was only going to last you know, four weeks or a month. And so uh, even if it decreased by 20%, it wasn't a big difference. But now that you're dealing with nano sealants and stuff that has to bond really good and it'll fail completely or it'll last a really long time depending on how you prep the surface, this step right here becomes critical, uh, which also this one does, which we already discussed. So panel wipe, you wipe it down with a, with a car pro eraser, for example. Um, and then finally, we move on to the step of protection. So protect, in this case, we're going to talk a little bit more about coatings today, but you know, you could protect it with a wax, um, a sealant, or a coating. So a sealant could also, you could also branch this off further too. And I mean, you could do that with all of this. It's, it's a, uh, <laughs> Um, especially in today's world, you know, the, the terms that different companies use, it doesn't actually, there's nobody that's holding anybody's feet to the fire, so people can call anything anything. You could call, you could find a product called so-and-so wax, and it's not even a wax, it's a sealant. Um, you could find somebody call something a coating, and it's not really a coating. They just, that became a strong buzzword, so now there's products that people call coatings that aren't really coatings. It just, it, it could go all over the place, but find a company that you trust, or uh, do the research on your reviews, um, uh, test the products yourself, and, and come, to, uh, come to know a company that you really trust with this information, and then consult with them, and you can, you can become knowledgeable about what you're actually using, depending on the brand. So wax, sealant, coating, and then off of that, uh, sealant could be a nano sealant, and this is what a lot of people call a coating now. Like some, some people will use, um, like a sealant or a spray sealant that has a little bit of uh, SiO2 or nanotech in it, and they'll call it a coating, or, or they even like the term ceramic more than anything. The ceramic is probably the hugest buzzword out there right now. So you'll see that a lot of times, ceramic uh, coating. Um, really, it might be just be a sealant. But actual terms, is what I, I, as, as honest as I can possibly think to name them, would be a nano, nano sealant or a polymer sealant. This would be tech that's been around for a long time, the polymer sealant. It's also a fantastic product, 
but it's not the same thing as a nano sealant. Um, uh, polymer sealant, and then there could be, technically there could be a polymer sealant that is a nano sealant, but that's, that's making it, I'm just gonna try to keep it more, uh, uh, more simple than that. So when I say a polymer sealant, I'm talking about like a traditional sealant that does not contain uh, the, any ceramic in it, it's not a nano sealant. Um, this will traditionally last, really these will traditionally last about the same length of time, it's just that they act differently. This is a lot harder to kill with chemicals, this is, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, this is a lot harder to kill with chemicals, but a lot of times the polymer sealant can last just as long as a nano sealant, or maybe even longer. It's just that it won't um, resist the dirt, everything won't wash off the surface as easily, and it won't, although it will wash off better than wax. And, th and then also the nano sealant um, will, uh, will stand up to chemicals a lot better. So if you wash this with Dawn detergent, and put alcohol on it and stuff like that, then this is gonna die if you keep hammering on it like that. Uh, on a nano sealant, it's not gonna die as fast even if with Dawn or IP, I mean some of them could, but if you take for instance like Carpro Hydro or Hydrofoam, something like that, you put those on, I mean you can't, it's, I don't wanna say you can't kill them, but good luck trying to kill them with chemicals. <laughs> they, they don't come off so easy. So anyway, I digress. I'm just gonna make this a little more realistic. Somewhere on this car, there was a, there was something that was probably too deep to safely remove completely. So, you know, we polished it. Nobody's ever going to see it. Um, we would like to remove it, but in this case, we only have so much clear coat. Maybe we decide this is not a safe scratch to completely remove. But we've polished it, rounded the edges. This is good. The rest of it's perfect. There's no micro marring. Um, you can put it in the direct sun, and, and the surface is great. We're we're happy with this surface. It meets the goals of our client or ourself or whoever's polishing this car and who they're polishing it for. Um, so now we're going to put a ceramic coating on it. We've panel wiped it. We've decided we're gonna use a ceramic coating long ago. And so when we put a ceramic coating on it, basically what happens is you have a, a, bottle, of, uh, a bottle of product, the, we'll say C-Quartz UK 3.0. Um, you put that on an applicator and you just apply it in a crisscross fashion. You can check out our other video for real close details on on that, but um, that's going to put a layer, you can see uh, how to do it in our other video, but that's gonna put a layer of ceramic coating, maybe a micron thick across there, and it's gonna fill in that. And in a perfect, you know, in, in reality, if you really zoom in on this, nothing's perfectly flat. You have pores in the surface, and but this is as good a, a example, you know, to try to simplify it as we can make. So we've got our coating on there, when that coating first goes on the surface, it's a liquid. It's poured out of a bottle. You wipe it on, and then it's going to flash. You're going to wipe some of it, wipe whatever is left over off, and the part that's supposed to stick to the paint is going to stick to the paint. Uh, generally, we'll come back an hour later and put a second coat on. You don't have to. One coat would last well, good, but two coats is going to do better because some of that coat is going to fill in the pores. It's going to soak down in here and fill in the pores in the paint, create a base for that second coat. So. Now you've got this uh, ceramic coating on here. It's undergoing something called a sol gel process. Uh, basically it's turning from a liquid to a gel and then to a solid. Um, we applied it as a liquid. By now it's a gel. Um, I, I like to imagine, I don't know if it's accurate, but I like to imagine like a, a bowl of jello. Um, and that jello is eventually gonna become a solid. Um, so during that time that it's a gel, um, you could, uh, eventually, say four hours later, you could pour water on this and it's not going to wash off. It, even four hours in, it's good. It, in a perfect world, you're not going to pour water across it, but just to give you a little bit of knowledge about how it works, at that point, it's, um, the water's not going to wash it off. However, it is very, when it's in that gel state, it is very susceptible to water spots. So if you were to, for instance, say, oh, I got it car coated, it's fine, it's okay if I get water on it, I think I'll go for a drive, and you went to go for a drive, and the guy in front of you on the highway sprayed his windshield wiper fluid, and it had bad minerals in it, and that landed on your paint, and went down your paint, then you're probably gonna get water spots there, and they're probably gonna etch it, because it's a bowl of jello. So, <laughs> so it's gonna etch really, really bad and really easy. So over time, over 12 hours, 24 hours, uh, especially if you IR cure it, it's gonna become much more um, resistant and it's it's going to be a solid within 12 to 24 hours. Um, once it's a solid, then obviously it's going to be stronger, uh, but it's still going to be uh, those chains and the way that it's bonded to that paint is not going to be complete 
in reality, it'll take weeks or months even for it to be at its full strength, um, at least weeks for it to be at its full strength, but it's gonna be far stronger than a wax or a sealant pretty quick. Within three days, and this is, you know, it all depends, again, there's many variables in the world, the heat, the type of paint, the, the density of the paint, um, the, uh, you know, all, all the different things, if it's been in the sun, all these different things are gonna affect how fast and how hard it cures, but uh, after about three days, generally speaking, at this point you can wash it with soap, it's no problem. Um, we usually say keep it indoors or try to keep it um, in the garage for uh, 12 to 24 hours minimum. Um, and after that you can drive it. But if you get splattered with a bunch of bugs, those bugs have acids and nasty stuff in it, you don't want to leave those bugs on there. Um, so especially for this for a few days. So then you want to gently remove the bugs. But after three days comes, at this point you can go ahead and use, you can just wash the car if you get bugs on it. So uh, something like uh, reset, uh, which would be you know, in our wash. Reset is, that's in the early on step, but now this goes full circle and becomes a maintenance product. So Carpro Reset, that's what we would use to wash it. Um, if we had bugs on it and it was you know, a week old and, and we went for a long ride and got a bunch of bugs on it, then we would use like bug out. That removes the bugs if they've been stuck on there too long. But if they're fresh, then the reset will take them right off. The great thing about using a ceramic coating is, and this is an uh, important part of the, part of this, part of the story here, um, a lot of people will try to sell ceramic coatings as being bulletproof. There's a lot of fraudulent claims in the industry, and it's really important that we, uh, that we don't make those types of claims. It's, um, it's, it's obviously, it's just wrong to, to lie to people in the first place and give them false hopes and things that aren't true, but it's also not necessary. Um, you, you don't, you know, nobody, nobody wants to be the guy that, that promised somebody something and, and then that person found out that, that they were told or they were sold something that wasn't real and wasn't honest. So um, keep things honest. If you're a, a professional detailer that is doing this for a living and this isn't just your own car that you're doing this on, then keep things honest and make sure that you share these, you share whatever um, amount of information your client's willing to hear from you. Make sure you share that with them and tell them the truth about it. Don't tell them that it's scratch proof. The ceramic coating is not scratch proof. There's no ceramic coating out there that is scratch proof. You can scratch every single one of them. Um, you can scratch a windshield. A windshield is glass, and a windshield is much harder than any ceramic coating on the market, by far. And, you know, put that windshield wiper there with a grain of sand on it, and guess what? You're going to have a scratch mark because that grain of sand is just as hard as that glass. It all comes down to what's harder and what's going to cut the other thing. So ceramic coatings can be scratched, no question. You do want to take good care of it. You do want to use good quality um, wash mitts and towels. Um, ceramic coatings can get water spots, just like it had before we ever came and coated it. The, those etchings, those mineral deposits that turn into water spots. Even if you get your car coated, even with C-Quartz UK, um, even with any kind of ceramic coating, you can still get water spots. So you have to still maintain it. So why would I get a ceramic coating? That's the important thing, and that's what you need to be honest with your customers about, is there's a few really good reasons to do that. And number one is it lasts a long time. They don't have to keep getting it waxed. They don't have to keep getting it sealed. Uh, but that's not the best, in my opinion. That's not the most important. The most important is how easy it makes it to take care of your car. So uh, I talked a little bit about bugs hitting the front end. Um, when, I, when I go for a, you know, whatever, uh, when I drove up to, I've got a Tesla, and I, the front of that thing is like a, looks like the front of a bulldozer, so it picks up some bugs. So I went up to, I did Iron Man uh, a month and a half ago, and it's uh, Iron Man Florida, this one. It was maybe 700 mile round trip or something, somewhere around there. Anyway, I picked up a ton of bugs on the way there and on the way back. Um, now, even with a ceramic coating, if you leave those bugs on there long enough, you're going to have tons of bugs smashing into that car all the time. Even if you leave those bugs, if you leave those bugs on there long enough, then the acids, there's some really nasty acids in there. There's different parts of, the, of different bugs that have hard shells. There's all kinds of nasty stuff that eventually it's going to start to eat at that ceramic coating and it can etch the coating. The good thing is, is that it's not etching your paint. It's etching your coating instead of your paint. So um, instead of we have that, like we talked about before, we have that layer of clear coat there. We have the color coat beneath that and the primer beneath that. This layer of clear coat, other than repainting your car, you cannot, um, you know, you can't build that clear coat back out, except for to keep that part protected and have that ceramic coating on there. So now, when we have, uh, if we do leave something on there too long and we do get a little etching or something, 
then it's going to be in this layer of ceramic coating instead of going further into our clear coat, hopefully. Um, regardless of that, the most important part is that it's super easy to wash. So now we come along with the reset, and now I'm not sitting here trying to scrub at it, which is much more likely to put swirls in the surface. Now I'm literally just spraying the reset on there or spraying some bug out on there if I left it on there for too long. But generally speaking, you're just going to rinse it off. A ton of it's going to just come right off because the ceramic coating lets everything slide off real easy. And then after that, when you take your wash mitt with your reset and go over that, that's just going to pull the rest of it right off. Um, if you leave it on there too long, then obviously you got to move into a little bit higher chemicals. But um, the difference from a non-coated car to a ceramic coated car is night and day. And so that's the number one reason. Um, and those are probably the two biggest reasons to have your car ceramic coated. But again, if you're in a, a, a detailer that's doing this for a living, it's really important to be honest about those things and not promise them that it's going to last for a lifetime. That's not true. Um, if you're selling a warranty that is uh, 10 years or a lifetime warranty or whatever, then it's also important that you let them know what that means. You don't tell them that the coating lasts this long no matter what they do to it. You tell them the coating lasts this long if they treat it this way, and this long if they treat it this way, and this long if they treat it this way. And what I mean by that is a lot of people will say a ceramic coating is a 10-year coating or a 5-year coating or a 2-year coating. Well, that in reality is mostly marketing talk. Um, in reality, you may have a coating on the market that says that it'll last for two or three years and it lasts for longer. And another coating that somebody might claim is a 10-year coating, they just call it a 10-year coating or a five year, whatever it is that they call it. The reason they're doing that is because it's a lot easier for them to sell it. It's so simple. They don't have to go through explaining all these different things and telling you all these different things. It's so much easier for the consumer, especially in today's world, where you don't want to have to try to digest that stuff. You want to just say, good, better, best. Oh, great. It's easy for me. And so it's easy to sell, sell stuff to people like that way, but it's not honest. And if you take the time up front um, to just tell people the truth, then you will find those clients that, uh, that do want to hear the truth or uh, Worst case, you have somebody that, that comes to you, you tell them the truth, and you say, no, it's not going to last 10 years on a daily driver. Um, it's going to last 10 years on a car that sits in the garage, and you treat it really well, yes. But it's, you know, if you keep it that simple and tell them that, then maybe they say, mm, I'm going to go with the guy that told me, no matter what, it's going to last for 10 years. It's never going to get a scratch. It's going to be great. Let me go with that guy. Well, you might lose that client that day. But six months from now, when he's got swirls all over his car because he thought that it was impervious to anything, and when he went to wash it, it swirled up because he didn't use the right mitt because nobody ever told him anything about that stuff. Guess what? He's going to either come, be coming back to you for you to fix it, or the next car he buys, he's going to be coming to you because he knows he was lied to. So it's the, that's the best way to go. So the final step we discussed was maintain, and that is the main key to your ceramic coating lasting two, three, four, or five, however many years, depending on how you care for it. Um, with regards to the maintaining, um, I did want to mention we have some great brochures on the site uh, that kind of explain this process here that we went over earlier about the different types of defects. Uh, those are the uh, CarPro trifold brochures, and you can use those to help explain uh, that to your client. And then as far as maintenance, um, we have the uh, CarPro maintenance brochures, which are a great, uh, great bundle that explains in as simplest terms as possible how to do things like decontaminate and wash and everything so that if you don't want to be the one that's maintaining those cars, you can um, provide this to your customer. And this can help do the educating so that you don't have to. And uh, you can send them to us and we'll be happy to educate them as well if uh, you do not want to wash the, the vehicles after you've coated them. So uh, I think we'll close it out with that. That's plenty long for one day. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Really enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave those below, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.